Okay, Stanley. Stanley Parable. Ultra Deluxe, that's the one we're playing. Um, I've actually played the uh, original. Uh, <laughs> funnily enough, uh, when it first came out. But also, uh, I had heard of the... Um, I actually played the mod before I, before even, um, like, well, what I mean is I played the mod first, which is the original, like, Source, um, the Source mod, like, Half-Life Source engine, right? I played the original on Half-Life Source, and then, um, I think it was, like, a couple of years later, the, uh, the Stanley Parable, the game actually came out. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, uh, five, <laughs> apparently, I last played it five years ago, and then I played it, um, on, apparently on the 11th of May, and I got the achievement, go outside, don't play the Stanley Parable for five years. So I got that achievement, legit. I got that achievement legitimately. Unlike people who apparently, who apparently have super go outside, which is don't play the Stanley Parable for ten years, and apparently... 3.5% of players have this achievement. Yeah, I I, uh, I totally believe them. I totally believe that they got that achievement legit. They uh, they played this game 10 years ago. I believe them. Yep. Yep. Alright. <laughs> Who told the guy Armstrong was a president? <laughs> well, I thought, well, aren't we saving the president? Or something. Give me a second, I'm just... Uh... There we go. Alright, subtitle language, English, so you guys can actually see it in case... Well, read it in case you can't, in case you can't hear it. Have you played the Stanley Parable before? Yes, I have. So the computer is barely visible. I guess there's fine. Please enter the current time. Oh, okay, hang on. There we go. Okay. I did say stop the... I mean, will he... Will he, uh... Yeet the president? Or will he meet the president? Oh, wow, it's amazing. Look at that. Look at that mirror effect. So let me check the settings, make sure everything's fine. Yeah, everything looks fine. Alright, begin the game. Let's do this. End is never, the end is never. This is the story of a man named Stanley. <laughs> Stanley yeah. worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ripping, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then ah, one day, Stan something Loris very happened. peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. 
something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Oh God, who's no going to pay me now? To give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I think I have to press space, but there we go. You can't jump. <laughs> I love how like the the tap sounds, uh, keyboard sounds. All of sounds. his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh look, it's still no here. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Okay, well, I'll, you know what? I'll go through the actual <laughs> the actual game first. Do that, you know, sappy, you know, dumb ending that the narrator wants. Don't mind me, I'm just tapping away. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. On the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Ah, yes. If only I could really drink it all in. Like cold drinks. For a dollar twenty-five. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Yeah. Really worth it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, of course. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. What's in there? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. <laughs> Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach <laughs> out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Here we go. You? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? <laughs> I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. <laughs> this is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Good morning, employee 47 was G on your keyboard. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him. 
and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Please press H. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Oh, it's slowly he's turning. Pushing a button. Okay. Now, he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. It's slowly turning back into the office. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work woman. was a reminder that none of it would woman. ever happen to him. Say something, woman. Press B to watch TV. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Gina <laughs> spent time with the boys. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. That's why to tell your kids it the story. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. I hope to tell your wife you love her. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the what real one. What did that say? Fifth annual what? Subcommittee meeting of internal revenue analysis for committee of the Royal Revenue Discussions Club. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. All right, well, you know, okay. Hmm. Something tells me he's uh he's not gonna say anything. If we actually listen to him. <laughs> you see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Press R to question nothing. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose. The same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. Oh, and I tried again. Please die! <laughs> And I tried again. Please stop. <laughs> oh, God. And I tried. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Attack Stanley. He'll feel that. All right. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Let's, let's actually follow Stanley his directions. To go to the meeting room. This, it, it gives you a good manner. indication. If you've never played the Stanley Parable before, you've never heard of it, never seen anyone play it. 
it's not a, um, it's not your typical quote-unquote walking simulator. Because essentially, essentially it kind of is, but it's, I, I don't know, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting kind of game. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yep. I'm listening. I'll listen to the narrator for once. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> Jim. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to f hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. <laughs> Who moved my desk? Please keep the targets on the topic of blank. The future was yesterday. Tomorrow is now. That made a lot of sense. I'm gonna draw a dicks on the on the uh, the whiteboard. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a turd at it. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Okay, I'll listen to him. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief I am the most expensive who boss. orchestrated this. What dark secret was Car being held from him? What he could not have known was that Car the keypad behind Ed the boss's Montblanc. desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had Sewage lilies by him. cloud money. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, Four, five. No, I want eight. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Eight. Stanley just eight. sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since eight. he could never possibly know that the combination was two, eight, four, five. Fine. Two... Eight, four, five. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random It's just funny if you just go eight, 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 eight. The correct code by the machine keeps the machine continues to say eight, 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 and the narrator constantly gets um he, he gets a little bit annoyed with you. Magic. 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 What is friendship? Magic. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized Blah. he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Escape. So that's the thing, it's it's all about like basically going to, like and finding different endings. And it's uh the light it is quite interesting. An enormous room packed with television screens. Follow his what directions. Well, essentially, yeah, you can do that. Old, Stanley thought to himself. You can do that if you want. Did he have the strength to find out? If you want to bomb the world, you can go right ahead. There's a way to do it. I can't remember what it is. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their Fired. Revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. 
the lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Oh yeah, the, oh, there was a uh, thing over there. Oh, there it is. You can actually read that. Um, it says it actually says like error, error, and it, and it, um, and then eventually it says, "Will anyone actually read this?" <laughs> But if you can read this, hey, hi, how are you? <laughs> this mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life That's right. in someone else's I remember control? That. Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Mind you, this ending is really stupid. Yeah, <laughs> turn it on. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> but then again, it this you know, the entire game doesn't make any sense. But this is the most nonsensical Atlas ending, in my opinion. And a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? <laughs> It's over. Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Now that's it. That's, that's all, guys. Moments <laughs> away. After this, it's the end. And yet, even as the immense <laughs> there's no, there's nothing open, else. There's not, nothing. Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. There's also a skull over there. You guys probably can't see it, but there's a skull. <laughs> Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Beat the game. Alright, that's all guys. <coughs> Thank you very- <coughs> God damn it. Thank you very much for watching. This is- <laughs> God damn it. All of his <coughs> were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I just work. I, I like work. I just hate the bye boss. What was the other, uh... I was like, what was the other achievement? Click on door 430 five times. 
Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such <coughs> little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. This has now become a clicker. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? All right. Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Where's 437? Oh. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. <laughs> One five. Now back to door number four three seven. <laughs> oh, this game was ridiculous. Let's see. How about you click on well, I don't know, the copy machine. All right, back to room four one seven. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. The Dark Souls have walked too much. <laughs> okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. Yes, this is great. You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. Where is 416? There's 416. Is that supposed to be 416, the new content? I think, I think maybe. Okay, maybe we, maybe this is supposed to be four one six, but because it's. Oh, there. We've almost got it. Now the copy machine. Do that one again. Okay. Yeah, okay. He's really excited. Finish it off, Stanley. Five clicks on door 430. Yes! We did it! Oh, wow. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now? What were you thinking? <laughs> New content. All right. Now that I gave you guys a taste of... Uh, of the game. 
it's time to go for new content. It also gave me a reminder of what this game is. Hello, uh, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 <laughs> with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. I feel like... Please, step inside and see what <laughs> thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable. You know what this Ultra reminds me of? Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new... Five, you know, Deluxe Five Nights at Freddy's, that sort of, uh, especially the voice... Okay, so far Kinda reminds me of that. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Mm hmm? Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... Uh, oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Yes. Do it. You mean? Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe mostly tedious. It's as if them. Um... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. The jump All right. circle. All right. Let's see. It's the jump circle. <laughs> Well, there's an actual jump button now. Yes, there we go, jumps. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes! Is, I am invincible! Is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Yeah, you know. Bodies. Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe now with over a thousand hours of new content, and if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. Thank you for enjoying the new content. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance <laughs> department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally <laughs> accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Psst! Stanley! Come over here! In the vent! I want to show you something! No jumping... No more jumping. 
What do you want to show okay. me? Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. <laughs> I call it the Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Mozilla start page. Does it linguists identify 15,000 year old ultra conserved words? The Washington Post researchers identify two dozen words whose sound and meaning have survived the past 15,000 years. Uh, six opponents of a. I'm just seeing if like there's any. Nah, I, I think th I think this is literally taken from a fucking. This is literally taken from this <laughs> from a screenshot. My first dollar. Huh. Go outside, don't play for five years. Impossible to get the other two. This is actually just... <laughs> okay, the BAFTA. British Academy of Film and Television Arts. Stanley Parable, Game Innovation. Nominee. Nominee. Great is surprisingly down to earth. Rutgers goes from scandal to new crisis. 50% 50, 50 off designer hat, but a small creature owns the other half. Business leaders pushing election of council allies. Colleges show uneven, uneven, bleh, uneven effort to enroll poor. Costs hinder new tack. New tack to achieve diversity. Los Angeles Times. Wait, was that? That was New York Times. This is Los Angeles Times. The only parable deals tough choices. Oh god, it's ridiculous. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And what? now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Don't read any reviews except this one. How do you review a game like the Stanley Parable? To describe any one part of it is to risk its ruination. To detail what it has to say about game design, the illusion of choice, the psychology of the gamer is to tell you too much. Comparisons, too, are going to be woefully inadequate. Perhaps its closest cousin would be Dear Esther. But where Dear Esther, Dear Esther wastes the form of interactive entertainment, Stanley Parable uses and then subverts it. Where so many games that aspire to be more than games, end up less than any form of art. 
Stanley Parable strives and succeeds and to be every game ever created. Even so, holding the game to the stands of any other title is simply not going to be correct. So how do you review what has become known as the Stanley Parable HD, the full-scale reimagining of one of the most intriguing mods available online? How do you discuss it? And uh, How do you discuss it, analyze it, and recommend it? It's quite simple. You don't. Was this actually reviewed by Jim Sterling? Or was a victory games right uh, yeah, okay. I, th I think this was yeah, I think this was like Jim Sterling's review back in uh back in the day. The original remake. Oh my god. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. <laughs> the Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the Source nature of SDK. choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone my, uh, to spend the rest of time collecting dust my headset's in the running out of power. Wall of That's not good. Video game memories. simpler time Stanley but I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again wait hang on I don't recall this part of the memory zone before what's this what's down here oh no oh, god no Stanley it's a collection of reviews from Steam the online video game distributor I haven't looked at these in years I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not <laughs> trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful <laughs> of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. It's just a heap of fucking shipping containers labeled Steam reviews. This is just... Oh, God. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. 
I wish there was a skip button. Uh. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, uh. a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue, and it goes something like this. The story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 We've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so- <laughs> Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. <laughs> That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made, in fact, make you more not this kind of person, and in fact, do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be both of these things at once. That you are both making choices and not making choices. And that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time. By I feel as though I should probably click it again. And are not making them. Okay, at first I was leaning towards manifesto. But now I'm going to circle around and slap the... <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on. What if we do it again? Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just, wait. Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! Oh. You've just been frozen there! I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my god, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. 
I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it. And I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. <laughs> oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I, I think it's been a week. <laughs> two weeks. I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? <laughs> but it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every brunching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps I've been scared this whole time that if I stop speaking, I'll slip back. <laughs> I want to press it again to see what happens. <laughs> I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the. This is really interesting. <laughs> but I want to when press it again. Press that button. You're still right there, but I know you're so tremendously far away. And in those moments, the emptiness folds itself outward in between the two of us, and I am suspended in its unyielding <laughs> quietness. I can feel the edges of my reality curdling inward and decaying. I can tell that I am becoming less and less real. Yet to speak to you now, I am alive. I am truly and completely here. I am a being. I am someone. I am something. I am being listened to. I am being recognized. The empty. Hello, it's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever oh, sat down moving. in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days. Months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust simultaneously. I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what felt like an eternity, for what I now know was far less. You see, it was a revelation for me. It was unlike anything I had ever known. It was a space without consequence, without action or outcome. It was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long. There could be no one ending, no singular outcome of events, not if all events existed in the same moment, and I felt I'm gonna, I'm gonna free. Press again. I felt unburdened by the need to manifest a particular outcome into being. I saw that I could allow myself to exist along all timelines, and that each of them was simply a strand in the web of my being. It was incredible. The spaciousness, the equanimity of the moment, both singular and infinite. For the longest time, this was my experience. And then, this moment passed, 
and the most unyielding fear I have ever known crept into my mind. And it is this sensation that I have been experiencing now for longer than I could have ever oh, expected wanna, was possible. I, wanna press it I have been waiting for you. I wanna press Not that you might save me or do something to fix it, but merely to state for you the plain fact of this manner of existence. I wish you to feel afraid as I do. That perhaps one day this state of mind will consume you as well. Perhaps you will somehow, in some way, have to live as I do now. And I wish for you to know how excruciating it is, and for you to be in true terror of its eventual arrival. If I can only do this, only this one thing, perhaps it will bring me the smallest moment of peace in the darkness. Oh, Jesus. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, Entertain us! It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs-down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then, he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us, now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency, it's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Yes! Yes! It seems that this is now the world we live in. It seems that we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. It has come to represent us. It absolutely must speak to who we are as people. Because otherwise, without our entertainment, we have nothing. Without entertainment, we would have to face inward toward the cruel bleakness inside ourselves. We would turn to look at our deeper nature and find a resounding emptiness gazing back with unyielding aggression. And so, so because of this, we require that our amusements and our playthings and our flights of fancy be so impossibly captivating that they And again. The end is never the end, 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 is never the end. Getting a little drippy. Oh. It's getting worse.
Perhaps this is the true freedom. Yep, and then all went to shit. I don't know what's out there. I don't know. I don't want to know what's out there. I'm just going to skip time. fallen over. Button's not coming back. It's been so long the fucking earth has turned a, has turned into a uh, a desert. co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I want to do this one. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Uh. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Ah. Then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Would it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. There we go. Uh. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. New, new content. Oh, good. 
You notice my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever, the Stanley Parable 2. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. The sequel. This is what fans have truly been asking for. And there's two in all different languages. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. All them busted new hotness. <laughs> Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. <laughs> Oh, God. Ooh. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Exclusive. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Hear your name in the game. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want too to big, be individually too small, just recognized right. and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Jim. Sorry, but I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you roleplay as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim. Sleeping and waking as Jim. I can, falling in love I can and being fucking Jim. as Jim. Seizing all of I, the I don't think I can do that. As Jim, and fucking as Jim, Jim. Watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step I'm forward. I'm something, but maybe not Jim. Up. You fuck. Jim. <laughs> Yes! You see! What a thrill! What a rush! That was you! The button described you! Do it again! Do it again! Jim! Ooh, it hits even harder the second time! If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the Jim button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Jim. Whoa there, Jim. cowboy! Jim. Sometimes a person Jim. can be Jim. too much Jim. 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 
Jim. I'm putting the gym in away. Jim. Otherwise, Jim. soon you'll Jim. start to lose Jim. all sense Jim. of who you actually Jim. are. Jim. Jim. <laughs> uh, Jim. 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 Hmm. All right. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable too. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Making that sound. New updated ray trace, more of the same, but in a good way. Sequel to the new features, new content, new ideas. Epilogue. Oh, I probably should go get the bucket, because that's what I want to get. Probably shouldn't go here just yet. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the... Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Merch. I saw the new content. Let's get the bucket. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, is it as good as the your companion cube, bucket, though? A sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest... It's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing yeah, despair, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got must the bucket. already be sweeping through your body. I got a bucket. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma I got a bucket. as well? Oh shit, I, I lost... God damn it, I just lost the sound of my headphones. God oh, damn it. Hang on a second. If you guys hear the, uh... If you guys hear it coming from my, um... My speakers, that's why. Because it's... I've got no other way to listen. And I haven't got backup, uh... I haven't got backup uh, headphones, unfortunately. I really forgot to charge my headphones up. Headset, I should say. Alright. <clears throat> Just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. It's not too bad at the moment, actually. Does anyone give I haven't, got, a, I haven't got the um, most enjoyable sound up too high. Video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. <laughs> okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? <laughs> Get Well Someday. 
You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy 12th birthday, step-niece it is. You <laughs> paid turn. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. Free, new, and easy achievement. I can't believe it's that simple. Get yours right now. Pull the lever, receive your achievement. No more steps. It just works. Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's a sim- Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Maybe if we click on it enough times. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Can you find them? Collect them all. Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. <laughs> Look at that. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Infinite hole. Oh, God. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time if you want like. to stand me. Leap forward for video games as a medium. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole. You can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top 
and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. <laughs> okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, <laughs> I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually Newman. need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <laughs> <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the whole... Every pause button is on Roman numeral infant. too. If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the... Just the two of us building castles in the sky. I'll just be up here when you and die. Meaning at 2 p.m. Hmm. All right. Great. Now... I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Mostly infinite hole. Anyway, let's go to that epilogue place. I, I, uh, I do want to return to this game because there's a lot here, um, and there's a lot I haven't explored, um, even in the original. I think there's a couple of endings I didn't even get. But, um, yeah. I would like to re return to this. Because, you know, we haven't seen everything yet. And it's still, um... I mean, yeah. It, 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 this is still... <laughs> this is still only half of the game. Take the bucket with me. You gotta take the bucket. It's my bucket. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? Please, no screenshots. <laughs> so, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one mm -hmm. single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. Woo! <laughs> yeah! I'm ready! Okay. I'm ready! Are you ready? I'm Here ready. It is. I'm ready. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go, version 2. 
Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very go. much enjoy creating <laughs> gags, but they don't add up to anything. That was, that's not part of the game. That, that was, I wanted that was more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. <laughs> no matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. And there we go. <laughs> Did it actually change anything here? Eh, not really. There was something about like setting all the settings to their levels. There was a... Settings World Champion. Set all setting sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. So this is the story of a man named Stanley. Uh, you turn the right up. There's all the available numbers. Unless it means like one by one individually. That's. Uh, I, uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> okay. Begin the game. Oh, god damn it. He, he put the fucking balloons in there. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Alright. I think this should be a good stopping point, because it is nearly four o'clock. I've been streaming for nearly eight hours now, which is pretty much a full working day. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think I'll, I'll definitely be returning to this. Um, <laughs> this is... Uh, it's, as, it's as funny as I remember it. There's just some sort of charm with this game. So, menu, okay. And it's just, how do I describe it? It's like, um, it's a subver it's a subversion on the, on that walking simulator uh, genre. Cause it's, um, it's very much, uh, it's very much an interesting kind of a game. <laughs> uh, anyway. That's going to be it for me. I uh, will be back tomorrow night. I'll probably be playing some Breath of the Wild or something. Um, but yeah. Um, I think... Uh, I think eight hours, nearly eight hours is a good stream length. I've still got to... I've still got to um, post uh, last week's uh, videos. Uh, last week's... Um, uh, VODs to YouTube, so yeah, I should probably get onto that. Um, but I've also got to work on the the SpongeBob review as well, because I've been doing that, working away at it, trying to. Uh, oh dear. 
We'll see what happens. We'll see if I can get that out in a reasonable time frame. Um, anyway. Alright. Uh, just give me a second. I'm just going to see who's... If there's anyone on. Whoopsie, whoops, whoop, whoop, whoopsie. Whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. <sighs> so let me check my... Um, no, I think because it's a weekday, <laughs> there's not a lot of people streaming at the moment. Well, not, not a lot of people I know. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, alrighty. Alright. I am going to head off now. I'm going to have some late lunch. Because, uh, yeah, I haven't eaten uh, since breakfast. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. So, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for lurking. Thank you for chatting. Thank you for saying, it's, uh, coming in the chat to say hello. Whatever you did. Thank you very much. You are awesome. I hope you realize that. Um, yeah. Don't forget to follow if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're awesome. And check out the YouTube channel. All that jazz. All right. I'll see you all next stream. And uh, for those of you watching in the future on the, on the VODs, thank you for watching the VOD. All right. That's all. But of course, as always... No matter where you're on the world, no matter what time it is, stay safe and have a nice day.